rock and roll. Fernando oh. Perdomo, because you're you're new to the the realm and you're a guitar collector and a geek. Yes. Of of all your guitars in the future, which would you want Lisa to photograph? Which are your most iconic guitars? My most iconic guitar is a 1974 Fender Mustang that I've been playing for the last 20 years that is indestructible. I've literally thrown it across the stage, I've thrown it at drummers, I've thrown it in the audience, and everyone's like, dude, you smashed your guitar, and then I, I see your next show, and there it is. I'm like, yeah, it's because it's my stunt guitar, and it's my favorite guitar in the world, and I always say it would be my fire grab. It would be the first one I would grab just in case of a fire, because I. I love it so much. It's literally like the most expressive instrument I own. So you, so you would do a BB King. You'd run into the burning, flaming down juke joint and grab it. I would, I would risk my life for it. Yes, I played it at Carnegie Hall, and it's, uh, it's such an incredible instrument. It's got you some heavy it. mojo. Yeah, you saw me play it. Oh yeah, yeah. We were, the, I was just on cruise to the edge, hanging out with my my new friend over here. I mean, it's in his name. These are one of the nicest I watched him do like four different sets with different artists, and it doesn't matter who he's playing with, he, he just elevates the set because he's so good. That's what makes you indispensable. A little bit. I, I just love playing, you know, I, I, I've always had enthusiasm towards performing, and I've always had a good attitude when it comes to just like playing the role of something that's going to make the music better as opposed to the me show. You know, and I really love it. I mean, I've gotten to work with some incredible artists, and I'm about to uh, go on tour playing with Marshall Crenshaw, and he's one of my favorite guitar players, period. And I've always wanted to work with musicians like that, and he's going to take me on board as his lead guitar player, which is blowing my mind because he's an incredible guitar player himself. So there you go. He's from that great era of Nick Lowe and Rock Pile and Elvis Costello and. <laughs> that music that came out. New like wave 70s. power pop. New wave power pop. Power I love pop. it. Gear pop for now. People. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So many chords, and I always say, sometimes I prefer 30 chords in the truth as opposed to three chords in the truth. You know, he, he uses all the chords. I love him. Fernando, when you did the, uh, when you appeared in the Laurel Canyon documentary. Oh, yeah, film, Echo, Echo in the Canyon. Echo in the Canyon, with some quite storied artists. Well, I think the, I wish I would have saved this text message. I played on the record, and uh, I played very early on, and then they started getting all these famous people. And I got a text message from Andy Slater, who was the producer of the movie and the director of the movie, and he says, good news and bad news. The bad news is, you're no longer playing the solo on questions. The good news is, Eric Clapton is. And the even better news is, I kept your rhythm guitar tracks, so you're on a track with Clapton. And I'm like, See that mojo the Mustang brings in? Yeah, 100%. Well, you know what's funny is that I brought my Mustang to the sessions. He's like, no, you're, I've been collecting guitars for 30 years for you to use them. So I used all of Andy's guitars. And I ended up buying a 67 Gil, Gibson, oh, sorry, 67 Gretsch Tennessean, just like the one he used. And I remember bringing it over to rehearsal. And he's like, I'm like, look, I got one of my own. And he's like, what year is it? I'm 67. He's like, uh, post Beatles Gretsches aren't as good. I'm like, but this one's great. <laughs> This one's great because this was a '63. Hey, the year I was born. That's yeah, got, okay. You look incredible. That's magic. Oh, good times. You guys having a good name so far? We were admiring the space. Oh yeah. We like the space. There's I more the breathing room. Parking spot. There's more breathing room than in the parade routes a little more open. And not having those monstrous guitar companies kind of opens it up a little. Bit. This is going to be the year of the smaller companies and yes. the year of the of yes. the. Uh, you know, there's a little more heart to the stuff that you guys do, you know? It's a great thing. Back to the basics. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. What was your first guitar? My first guitar was my brother's Tysco, which I demolished. He also had a nylon string, but my first guitar of my own was a Harmony that I got with lessons when I was eight. And then my first electric guitar, which I still own, was a 68 Guild S100. When I started learning guitar, back in the late 80s, everybody was trying to sell me one of those like Ibanez's with the Floyd Rose, and I'm like, I want to be Pete Townsend, so I pointed at this old guitar, and they're like, $150, and it's really old, and funny enough, it's like worth about 3000 now, but I love it, I played it to death, and I still use it. Well, that's what Kim Thayil plays, yeah. the old S100. Yeah, the S100, and it's uh, also the guitar player from Sparks, but you know, it's a great guitar, and it's a, uh, it's, 
built like an SG, but it's got a longer scale and it tunes great. They're wonderful. Right on. Thank you, Fernando. I love this. This is great. Yeah, Good come see us anytime. Thanks, Fernando.